Hello and uh, welcome to this tutorial on taking a costume from 3D Studio Max 2008 and putting it into the MovieStorm. Um, hopefully quite a quick tutorial, just running through the export process from Max, putting those files into the Modders Workshop and then creating the costume and chucking that into so that it appears on set in MovieStorm itself. Won't be covering too much in Max because obviously you know, the 3D app you buy is up to you, how you use it is up to you. We're not going to tell you how to do that. What we will tell you though is how to deal with the flaky Cal exporter. Uh, so we'll start by grabbing a demo outfit, a very basic outfit set up with four different materials just to give you the idea of multiple material IDs. And we'll now run through the various parts of Cal. When creating an object and exporting it to the Cal format you would normally export a skeleton, mesh, materials and any animations. Because the costumes reference the um, one specific skeleton we obviously won't be exporting the skeleton here but we will be doing the materials and mesh. Animations will be in another video. Uh, so let's look at the materials quickly. Set up 1, 2, 3, 4, material ID 1, 2, 3 and 4. Um, I'll try and quickly show you that here terrible screen resolution makes it hard to navigate. You can see the feet are on four, trousers three, it doesn't matter which numbers you choose, just you know, just showing you the different IDs and stuff. But uh, the important thing is that the Cal format has the brackets 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. If they're not there it'll get lost on the way into Movie Storm. Likewise, um, it's always a good idea to make sure and double sure that your material is properly assigned to your character or object. This applies to all applications I've found. They can get a bit flaky. If you make a change at some point and don't reassign it, Cal will just assume that you didn't assign that material to it. So always double check it assigned before you go exporting. To export it, it's always a good idea to copy and paste the name. Make sure you get exactly the same name. Again, otherwise Cal might forget which one you're dealing with. So I'm getting ahead of myself. So exporting, exporting the material, we want to select the Cal material type, the CRF, and we need to find the folder that we're saving it into, which is going to be in Movie Storm, Movie Storm, Movie Storm, Movie Storm, Movie Storm. Add on. Uh, I've created a folder already. Always a good idea to think ahead. Called it Export Demo. I've then copied the folder structure from another folder. Data, Puppets, Mail01, Costumes, I've called this Export Demo Outfit. Uh, the Textures folder has got the single white texture that you can see there that is applied to everything. That's just a demo texture, don't try and don't feel you have to copy that one in any way. It would just cause trouble if there wasn't any textures applied. Right, okay, so we're saving, exporting our first material, which was Material 0 in brackets 0. Hit Save. It'll then ask you to pick it again from the list, not entirely sure why. Um, it'll point out which textures it had applied, and there we go, we're done. So quickly run through the rest of those. Material 1. Material 2. And Material 3. Right, so material's done. Uh, next is the, the actual mesh itself. We've obviously double checked that all the uh, skinning is where, how we want it. So we'll select the mesh and export the CAL mesh file, CMF. Important thing to remember with CAL, when you export your mesh file, there's every chance that it'll go wrong um, in whichever application you're using. So after you've exported any mesh, do not save your file. Always save before you do a mesh export, otherwise there's a chance that the file can become corrupted and then you'll save a corrupted file. So, um, getting back to the job, export demo outfit is the uh, name of, for this costume. Hit save and that will create the CMF file. It'll ask you which skeleton you want to refer to. Um, so here you can see we are using the add-on core 
data puppets male 01 skeleton it's the male and female skeletons in core they're the ones you reference so select the one you want to reference hit open and then next it then asks you how many bones you want controlling each vertex with um, a costume it's quite a complex object you could, um, if you think about say the, the um, say the elbow a vertex on the edge on the point of the elbow will want to be controlled by both the forearm and the upper arm so that vertex would want two bones per vertex control however on this costume obviously there's other areas that are far more complex so we need a higher limit we've set a limit of four bones per vertex um, you can go above that but it will cause things to slow down and go wrong and most people won't even notice the difference so aim to work for four bones per vertex when you create objects uh, if it's a simpler object say it's just like a robot with two boxes waggling around those boxes would be probably controlled by one bone each this is just one bone per vertex when you export it so anyway back to what I was saying we're doing four um, bones per vertex here and then all the other tick boxes and things you can ignore so hit next and it'll calculate at the bottom hit next again we're ignoring that and we're ignoring the springs and that's that that's the mesh done but that's it for Max. We're now going into Mozza's workshop, so I shall set that loading. Um, and I shall close down Max and expect it to have crashed. We do not want to save, because there is every chance it's corrupted. Right, here we are in Mozza's workshop. Um, and we carry on with setting up the costume. We want to go into Puppets, Mail 01, Body Parts give that a second to load, there we go, um, and create a new body part. We call it export demo outfit. You can call it what you want obviously, and that creates an empty body part. So we want it to be a body, and then we want to simply add a mesh, and scroll through the list until you find the one you've created, or whatever it's called and they appear in the set in a lovely bright red colour with some weird flashing going on we then want to add the materials 0, 1, 2 and 3 right, it's at this point that I remember that TGA files don't actually work in MovieStorm they always used to um, so what I've done is I've quickly created a DDS file which I will have put in the same folder and I will now quickly replace the diffuse the uh, yeah the diffuse textures uh, right so now you want to go in and change all your options to how you want them whether you want things tintable loading user images um, how shiny they are whether they've got transparencies um, the hands are skin so let's put them as skin even though it won't work in this but the idea is there um, and we just work our way through making sure they're all on. I'll just set them all to tintable for now. It doesn't really matter. As long as this texture works. And the last one. That skin as well. I might as well pop it on. And that is pretty much it. That's all you got to do. Um, so make sure the name's right. It's a body. Pick the add-on folder and hit save. Up comes the thumbnail generator that's fine by me. We just need to publish it um, by going to the publisher login and then hitting publish. Right, with that done it's all ready to play with on set. So I will close this down and see you back on set. Alright, and here we are in um, MovieStorm on the set and you can see the costume is in Next seems all fine. Bang them on set for the hell of it. There we go. One costume in. Hope all of yours are just as easy. And uh, if you're making a, if you're thinking of making a tutorial for other packages to show how they work, try and follow this formula. And uh, let's hope we get lots of people making stuff. All right, ta-da, bye.